presentations with food. Right, nice cozy group of people. Yesterday the whole room was filled up. So oh, right. And we had lots of questions and there's nothing wrong with questions, so anytime you're confused about anything, you need clarification just to ask. Okay? I'm open to anything, any questions. No such thing as a stupid question. I have plenty of those too. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, welcome to the lecture of the healing power of crystals and minerals. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Shelley Carr. Um, I have a master's degree in sociology. You may, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing with it, but there it is. I have one. <laughs> um, I have actually been interested in crystals and minerals for a really long time, thanks to my dad. Um, he's got a booth out there next to mine, um, but he's been a rock fanatic for as long as I can remember. He used to take us geo hunting, and so, you know, when you're a kid, you don't care about that kind of stuff. You're like, I don't want to do this, you know, but I've absorbed what knowledge he has, you know, and it has morphed into actually learning this, you know, the healing properties of crystals and minerals, which I find very fascinating. And we won't cover nearly everything that there is to learn about that today because it's just kind of a, I want to, want to tell you a little bit about everything, but it won't be in detail about everything, okay? So, with that said, um, I'm not going to dwell too much on history, but I did want to bring up a few interesting little tidbits. This, for instance, is um, a design for a magnetic airship. It was designed by a Brazilian priest dated 1709. Um, and I have the information where you can actually find this in the original text. But it was a craft that was supposed to be powered by agate and iron, and then when heated by the sun would become magnetic and fly. You know, this is in the 1700s. And, and this is just one example of many, you know, that are out there. Um, but, you know, strange as it may seem, uh, our present day technology couldn't exist without crystals and minerals. We have, you know, our computers are powered by crystals. They, uh, surgical tools are powered by crystals. Uh, they coat automobile engines and spaceships. It just it really, crystals and minerals are the building blocks of science and art. This is the point. I can't see everybody. <laughs> the therapeutic use of crystal and minerals is really not a new phenomenon. It has existed for ancient, uh, for centuries and centuries. Uh, Ancient uh, people, I lost my thought, train of thought, <laughs> sorry you guys. It's been here for centuries. It has been here for centuries. <laughs> um, Ancient people used crystals and minerals. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the art of healing with stones is thousands of years old. Evidence of gemstones were used to heal disease can be found from the most ancient civilizations. They were also considered to have protective properties. Shamans and medicine men harnessed power of crystals in ceremonies and rituals. This ancient knowledge has been passed down to our day, although a lot of that has been lost over the you know, years being passed down by word. Um, but it, some of it has seemed to uh, leak down through. So this is, uh, you know, when you hear, oh, that's, that's a new age thing, you know, the healing power and everything, it really isn't. It's been around for as long as men, have, men and women have been here on Earth. The thing on the right, was that from Egypt or do you know? Yeah, that was uh, an Egyptian, uh, probably worn by a pharaoh. Uh, they were. Egyptians were big into stones and minerals and everything that they had, that they wore, and 
and used and even in their burial. <coughs> Okay, but each crystal has its own unique energy signature. They're encoded with all you need to um, activate your own personal power. The key is to find a crystal that is attuned to your own personal energy or that raises your energetic resonance to ensure well-being and expand your consciousness. And not only flashy gemstones hold power, since antiquity, crystals of all sorts have served as a protective amulet. Humble stones such as flint, as you see over there, uh, were magical carriers for souls' journey um, that were used by shamans. Crystals are, for the most part, created by the Earth's awesome power. Some were born from volcanoes, glaciers, earthquakes, and <coughs> immense pressure. Others drift into being through osmosis, gas, bubbles, and nature's gentler forces. Uh, some so-called crystals don't actually have a crystalline structure. Amber, for instance, is fossilized tree resin, and volcanic obsidian formed so fast it didn't have time to crystallize. How a crystal forms affects how its power works. Those that grew slowly tend to emit their power gently, and those that were on an accelerated path of growth blast their power out into the world. Uh, at this point, it may also be a good time to mention that you need to be very careful in selecting your crystals and minerals because there are a lot of fake uh, minerals out there. Um, eBay is notorious uh, for having these types of things on their site from China. So if you're going to buy a crystal or a gem, uh, please be, be aware that most of them that are coming out of China are not real. They'll dye the halite to look like turquoise. For instance, right there, you know, that, that's halite, and it's dyed. Um, most, of, most of your uh, gems, minerals that come from there are going to be dyed in some manner. And that those uh, that you would think are malachite, no, that's plastic and it's painted. How do I know this? Because I was one that fell for that a while, you know, a while, while back when I didn't know any better. And I'm like, hey, this is a really good deal. I mean, it's cheap, you know, that, wow, this has got to be, this is a great thing. Until you get it in the mail and then you think it's not so great because it's fake. So, not such a good deal after all. So if you think it's too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, what you need to do is buy from reputable dealers like the ones we have out here in, on the floor today. You know, everyone out there are straightforward, and you'll get what you're what you're paying for. Is all the turquoise genuine? Pardon? Is all the turquoise genuine? It's not fake. Out on the floor? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it might be dyed, but they'll they should know that if it is. They will know that they should tell you. No, dyed is not as fake to me. Well you not not to everyone. So you just you know, just ask them if you if you're looking for turquoise, if it's a dyed variety or not. Right. Or stabilized is another thing. Stabilized is it, and all the dealers will tell you what it is. So if, you, if, you, if you're in question, just ask them. Yeah. You know, if they're dyed or stabilized, will it still have the healing effect and the power effect and everything? It depends on what it is. If it's a dyed other mineral, like for instance this turquoise, it won't have properties of turquoise. It will have properties of halite. Oh. It will still have that property, but it's just, if it's dyed, you just have that extra little... It shouldn't change, it doesn't change the chemical makeup of the stone. It's just, they do it because it makes it look pretty. Yeah. But it won't, you just need to know what it is you're getting. Okay? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the healing power of color because it's really important. Um, Many colors, I'm sure you've all heard of the color therapy. 
um, and how that affects your moods and how it affects your your psyche. Um, school rooms will paint their uh, rooms a green or a blue calming color or um, hospitals would you'll see a lot of times they have like blues and that it's supposed to be a calming color. Um, some restaurants might use bright colors, you know, red that increase your appetite. So color is very a power a very powerful thing, whether you realize it or not. And everybody's drawn to certain colors depending on their mood. Um, and colors will affect your mood. Um, like uh, the colors of crystals and minerals have the same effect. Um, I keep kicking something up here. <laughs> okay. Um, so the frequency of light that stones emit are important. They have a direct influence on the body's biochemical processes. In addition, stones reflect the body's chemistry. Stones consist of crystals whose smallest singular component is the atom, and these are in constant motion. But because the vibrations of energy are not visible, so stones seem to be solid objects. Their energy can be positive, negative, or neutral, but only its effects, by, but by only by its effects can be known. Can this be known, what it is? So you, I'm sure, have experienced if you're a toucher of stones and crystals, you, you go out and you pick up a stone and you feel it and it's like, oh, this feels so nice and it makes you feel tingly. Or you'll pick up a stone and you might feel it and it's, ooh, I don't like that. You know? Or you may pick it up and you might not feel a thing. Okay? That you're picking up on the energy of that mineral or that stone. Also, I, I, don't, I know I mentioned this later on too, you're kind of skipping around, but um, other things can affect the energy of the crystal or mineral as well. For instance, if it's got shipped by some angry worker and they're mad and they've had a really bad day, I've had a flat tire, oh, I'm going to pick this box up and you're getting a shipment of crystals and minerals. And they're angry and they're just really negative. They deliver the package to you, and you open your box. Oh, pretty crystal! Let's pick it out. Ooh, you're gonna pick up on the negative energy that that person just had. Okay. Likewise, if you have other people handling your stones, that's why you see. If I, you may have seen it or not, I don't know, but some people are very protective of their uh, pendulum or their crystals, and they don't want anyone else to touch them. And there's a reason for that. Because you, your energy will affect that crystal. Okay. Um, so anyway, with that said, let's go over a little bit about each color and what it means. Um, I don't know how many of you know about chakras. Um, are you all familiar with what a chakra is? Everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's pretty much become a mainstream concept, and most people are aware of what a chakra is. It is the energy centers in your body, and a color and certain stones will correspond with a certain chakra. Now, some there are some theories that have all kinds of chakras. I mean, from your foot, you know, but I only deal with um, the root and the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown. Okay, so that's what we're going to go over here. Um, red colored stones represent color of life, the warmth and vitality, and it stimulates the life force. It also corresponds with the root chakra. It uh, represents activity, energy, stamina, uh, your joy of living, sexuality, and love. Stones that uh, coordinate with that chakra are garnet, hematite. Now, hematite is a dark gray color, but that doesn't matter because it's a grounding stone. Um, red jasper, coral, onyx. Now, these, uh, some of these come in different colors. So you want the red, okay? 
or in the dark or, or black colors for the ruby chakra. Uh, ruby, black tourmaline, uh, shiva lingam, uh, those are also, um, they have different colors in them, but predominantly they're a reddish color usually. Obsidian and uh, flint. And those are just some. I mean, you, you know, I, there are other red stones out there. Uh, smoky quartz is not on that list, and smoky quartz is a very, very good uh, grounding and uh, cleansing of negativity stone. And if any time, I know I'm going to go through these a little quick, but after we're finished, I will be absolutely happy to help you pick a stone, or if you need more information, I'll, I'll let you know. I mean, I'll tell you, or try to help you. <laughs> All right, orange is warm and positive. It is the color of nourishment and circulation. It has to do with the sacral chakra. And we're working our way from the low, lowest chakra up, up the body. Um, it has to do with vitality, ambition, fertility, erotic feelings, and uh, stones. some stones that correspond with the sacral chakra are orange barrel, orange jasper, carnelian, and uh, darker or to the orangey citrine. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. There you go. Thanks, I just wanted to, I didn't want to hold you up, I just wanted okay. to write the names of the stones. Now, yellow has to do with emotional processing, communication, and intelligence. It also, it Correspond, yellow corresponds with your solar plexus chakra. Um, and a lot of these, uh, if you are blocked in that area, for instance, your solar plexus chakra holds all your emotions. If, so if you're an emotional stuffer and you don't deal with the emotions, you're going to have probably a lot of stomach issues or you're going to have a blocked uh, solar plexus chakra. So um, it has to do with the emotions such as optimism, cheerfulness, uh, success, generosity, satisfaction, um, all kinds of emotional processing. Uh, minerals and stones that are good for that. Chakra are the yellow or gold tiger eye. Um, tiger eye does come in uh, reds and blues, so this would be the yellow or the gold. And then yellow tourmaline and citrine. Citrine, the wonder stone. <laughs> I love citrine. Okay. And like I said, I, I I have this in writing. You guys are welcome to copy this when I'm done. Oh, oh good. Okay. So you have to rush and write all that. So as soon as I'm done with the page, I'll slide it to you. <laughs> Green is calming and is the best healing agent for the nervous system. It corresponds with your heart chakra. Uh, warm heartedness, friendship, openness, freedom, harmony, peace, empathy, self renewal comes from the heart chakra. Now stones that are good for treating the heart chakra are green and pink. Um, green, aventurine, Chrysopola, chrysophrase, jade, moss agate, olivine, emerald, green fluorite, and malachite. Um, now, those of you that don't know, or if you ever deal with malachite, malachite dust, and I don't want this to scare you, but malachite dust is poisonous. So you don't want to ever um, like saw it apart and then have the dust on your hands or anything, you know, because it is, it can be toxic. Um, my dad told me that, and he knows a lot of stuff. <laughs> so just be aware that that can be poisonous. Um, pink stones, coral, rhodonite, rhodochrosite, and rose quartz are all really good for the heart chakra. Just 
you know, does fluoride come in different colors? Yes, Actually, fluoride sir, comes in. Pink fluoride. Fluoride comes in a wide variety of colors, like greens and blues and purples and yellow and just about everything. Yes, this is sort of related, sort of unrelated. It's all right. Um, if somebody buys a stone from somebody who's had it, then it would have their energy in it. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. Okay, then I won't even ask it because you're going to yep. talk about it. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. You're, you're asking me about cleansing and charging and... and yeah, you wouldn't really know if it's for you until you did that, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. That's a really good question. Okay, blue, and the vibratory effect of the color blue is cooling and calming and healing. Blue is the color of innocence, and it corresponds with the throat chakra. Light blue um, has to do with faithfulness, loyalty, openness, freedom, and dark blues have to do with responsibility and respect for others. Stones that are good for this chakra are aquamarine, Celestine, Moonstone, Opal, Turquoise, Blue Topaz, Lapis Lazuli, Labradorite, and Blue Lace Agate. And this list is just the, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, a lot of blue stones. I mean, that goes with all of these. The list is not all inclusive. Right there. Oh, Blue lace agate. It's the last one on there. There you go. And that's the grand prize this year. Oh, one of the two is it? A, a beaded oh. blue lace agate with a beautiful pendant. So good luck, everyone. Yeah. Or one of you. One of us. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, how much did you go for? Uh, no, okay. okay. Indigo. The color of mysteries and mysticism banishes sickness and evil from one's awareness and allows space for mental freedom. It also corresponds with the third eye chakra, which is right here on your forehead. It has to do with intuition and mental connection. Uh, good stones for this would be sodalite, amethyst, sapphire, fluorite, turquoise, blue tiger eye, labradorite, and you'll see some of these listed several times that, uh, that they are because they span colors, you know, they cross over. Uh, banded agate and iolite. It looks like lolite, but it's iolite. <laughs> it's supposed to be iolite. Okay. Um, the next chakra is violet or purple, and also it can be white or clear. This has to do with enlightenment. Violet is a color with a very high frequency. Um, it's not the only one with a really high frequency, but it tends to be very high in vibratory frequency. Um, white, the color of pure intelligence. And these are the crown chakra. It has to do um, with intuition, wait, skip, insight, spirituality, transformation, determination, peace, and devotion to others. Um, stones that are good for this chakra are amethyst, beryl, blue lace agate, once again, diamonds, Apophyllite, my favorite, and quartz crystals, selenite, and jujilite. Should have made copies of this for you guys. You're going to have oh, cramps in your hands. I'd love <laughs> to have a copy of that. I will do my best to. I don't know if they have a copy machine here anywhere, but um, it'd be great. Do you have an email? 
You just email us the presentation. That's very true. If you want to leave me your email, um, I can send you a copy of the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. okay. Everything's on here will come to our email. Everything that's on here will come to you through email. So um, you have an extra piece of paper. I'll just use that one. I'll just use the back of one of these okay. at, when we're finished. Just remind me. Okay? Black stones um, are really good because they detoxify and ground your energy. Uh, they protect your body from harm and negativity. They dissolve energy blockages and tensions, relieve pain, and offers protection for the self. Uh, black stones such as obsidian, black obsidian, hematite, uh, smoky quartz, black tourmaline, uh, just to name a few, are very good grounding stones. Hematite especially and uh, smoky quartz. Another uh, aspect of the healing power are, are the shape of your crystals and minerals. Crystals naturally possess internal and external geometric shapes which mold how energy flows through them, but many crystals are artificially uh, shaped externally to enhance their power flow. So knowing how the external shape enhances the power helps you select the right crystal for your purpose. Take amethyst, for example. Amethyst comes in a geode. You know, you can find them in geodes. Um, it comes in beds of crystals. It also can come in a crystal point or a wand. Uh, it comes in a uh, um, pendulum. <laughs> like lost for words there, you guys. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it can come in a crystal ball. I um, mean, it just comes in a wide variety of shapes that they've been manufactured that way. So let's go through those really quick. Um, we have geodes, it has cave-like interior, and it collects and amplifies and stores crystal power. And so it will gently radiate out that power in your, in your environment. It can provide protection, creates an abundance, and encourages spiritual growth. And this will all be in the... PowerPoint that I'm going to send you. Um, points or wands. I didn't add on here pendulums, but they they serve the same point because they do come to a point. Um, they focus crystal power into a single concentrated beam. And when you place the point towards your body, it channels the power into your body. If you aim the point away from your body, it can draw off negative energy. Um, these are also good in activating crystal grids. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a little, in a little bit. Phantom crystals, they're usually laid down in layers within another type of crystal. Um, I think these are fascinating to look at. I, I'll, I spend hours going through all my crystal wands and points just looking at them because they're so, they just have so much going on inside. Um, it's, I think they're just fascinating. Uh, they're supposed to, they hold the memory of the soul's journey. They break up ancient patterns of behavior or can be ascended like a ladder to higher consciousness. Clusters are a group of points, and they radiate out, radiate out in different directions. They beam energy into the surrounding atmosphere, but they can also be empowered to draw off negative energy. So if you had a crystal or a stone, for instance, that you, had, you felt that had a lot of negative energy into it, you could put it into a quartz bed, that like a smoky quartz, or a regular quartz bed, citrine quartz bed would be good too. And I'm, this is a cluster, but I'm getting, I'm advancing to the beds, clusters or beds, and you can put that stone in that, and it, it will help draw off that negative energy. 
and the bed that I was jumping to. <laughs> it has many small crystals spread over a matrix base and it provides continuous crystal power. It's kind of like a battery. It provides a steady source of crystal power. Balls or spheres, they're artificially shaped from a larger crystal of the same kind. Um, they emit power in all directions in equal measure. Balls provide a focus for power such as insight or intuition. And traditionally, as you see over here with the gypsy and her magic fortune teller ball, that's kind of what people's image pops into their head when they think of a crystal ball. They think, oh, a fortune teller. Well, because it does provide insight or intuition. So. Palm stones, they're usually flat and rounded, and they're tactile reminders of crystal power. If you hold one, it kind of it soothes your mind, depending on the type of crystal, and you can focus your intention to create what you desire. Manifestation, they are awesome crystals. When it, they have smaller crystals inside the larger crystal that's formed around it. Um, they call those manifestation crystals because it uh, has the power of manifestation. Imagine that. Okay. <laughs> but they say especially of abundance. Um, but it can be harnessed to any crystal power or intention that you might have. They're particularly, particularly powerful. So how do you find the right crystal? Finding the right stone for you is the key to attuning yourself to crystal power. You'll probably start by searching um, like a crystal Bible or get on the internet and see what is gonna what, what you're trying to manifest. Let's say you're trying to create self-love and you'll find, oh, rose quartz is really good for that, so I want to get a rose quartz. Okay. Um, then you'll go hopefully to dealers like the ones we have out here on the floor today and you'll look at all of those and one will pop out and you'll pick it up and well, just, no, whatever, stick it in your pocket and take off. No, that doesn't work that way. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to put the intention out there and say something like the, you're, you're there in the store and you have all these gems and minerals and crystals in front of you and you say, I find exactly the right crystal for me now, and you can, you know, just, just one will just, you pick it up with your non-dominant hand, okay, that's always the best, because your non-dominant hand is not connected to your intellectual thinking brain that says, what are you doing, don't do that, yeah. this is stupid, or whatever. Your, uh, so your non-dominant brain is the one that you're going to use your intuition with. Okay, So that's the reason why they say you need to hold and attune to that crystal or stone in your non-dominant hand. And usually you'll get some type of a sensation, you'll feel a positive rush of energy, or you'll feel nothing. Or you can feel, this is not the right one for me. Okay, you put it back and you keep looking until you find the right one. Okay. Excuse yes. me. Um, I'm going to leave my email address because I heard your lecture, this lecture yesterday. I thought it was a different topic. Okay. So I, so I came yeah. Back. I had a lot of requests to, to do, do the again. same one. Okay. So I, I apologize. But if you have any questions about crystal grids, I'd be more than happy to help okay, you. Okay. I'll grab another card. My email's on this card. Okay. okay thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, you had to wait through the uh, so okay. far into I could, it. I could listen again, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are we at? All right. Um, so remember that the biggest and prettiest stone may not always be the one that is the right one for you. I mean, you might like earlier, a piece of flint or a big, just a lump of rock and you know, it's sitting there, 
you may pick it up and it may just be the most wonderful sensation you've ever felt in your life. Okay? So it's not necessarily the one that you, you're attracted to. So you need to, to expand and open your mind because something else might be the right one for you. Uh, how to cleanse and charge and program your crystal. <laughs> I really want to write this down, <laughs> but you're going to send it. You are going to send it. I am going to send okay. it. Don't don't worry. Don't panic. It'll be okay. <laughs> I guess I don't need that to pick one today anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Of course, this is being recorded and it's making me nervous. <laughs> Dar you, laboratory club. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm a member of. <laughs> Hi. All right. So when you find your crystal or, or stone or mineral, you Take a few minutes, you attune to it, and if you find that it's the right one that you want to use. <laughs> it doesn't help that I have ADD, so everything distracts me. He's like, what? Squirrel? Oh, shiny. <laughs> so you can imagine what I'm like when I'm actually looking at all the stones and minerals. Like, oh, <laughs> kind of overwhelming. Anyway, getting on with the topic here. <laughs> Cleansing your crystal. Um, there are many, many ways out there um, that suggest how to cleanse a mineral or stone. Um, some of those are salt water soak, uh, non-cooked brown rice, um, smudging, which is, uh, those of you who are not familiar with that, could be like a sage um, smudge stick. It, it's kind of like an incense, so you can light it and you smudge your crystal. You can hold it under running water. You can use flower petals um, as long as it covers the stone. Some have even said using a tape demagnetizer. Evidently, it, it, it does something to the negative ions in the stone. I don't know. A large uh, crystal cluster that is specific a specific energizer and cleaner like a uh, smoky quartz bed or a uh, regular quartz bed, like I said earlier. Is the that, selenite also good for that? Selenite? Uh, I'm not really sure. It probably would be. Yeah, I'll have, I'd have to look that in my, in, in my uh, Bible, crystal Bible. <laughs> also, before we, I want to make sure it's covered salt water soap or water under running water, selenite is water soluble. Right, and there are mm -hmm. things, especially like uh, your most uh, scale, like two and under, would, I wouldn't use water. That's why you have alternative um, methods of cleansing a stone. Like to, I use the brown rice uh, a lot, and only use the water if you know that it's not going to hurt the stone. Especially the salt water. Okay, so um, so crystals must be cleansed, charged, and programmed to bring about their power to life, and they must be maintained to keep that power. It's no good to buy a crystal and stick it in your pocket, like I said earlier, and expect it to work miracles. Treat your crystal with respect, and they will work when wonders. Treat them badly or misuse them, and their power may turn against you. So cleansing your crystals, um, and like I said, these are a few methods. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people do it overnight. Um, like put it in the brown rice and just let it sit there overnight. Um, some people hold it under the running water for you know, 10 minutes. So just use your intuition and what feels right to you or what makes sense to you is what is right. 
um, charging your crystal or mineral, um, you place that in, you can either make a grid of crystal points, you put your crystal and mineral that you're energizing in the center and take six or an equal amount of crystal points and aim them at the crystal or mineral and that will energize it. You can also place it um, within a large crystal bed or uh, a cluster. And also you can place it in the sunlight or the moonlight. And the full moon and new moon are the most heavily charged. I just uh, actually heard to someone um, waited for a storm and it was lightning out and the rain water they collected the rainwater from the storm it was like electrically charged and then the rainwater they collected that in a bowl and they put their stones in that wow. mm -hmm. and so they got it you know cleanse and charged whammy at the same time it was like well i don't know about that i'm scared of thunderstorms so i'm not going to go out there without lightning going on and collect rainwater but it was a cool idea um, so those are some methods to charge it. Then the ne next thing you need to do, and this is really the most important, is your intent. What you intend, uh, what you want to manifest or bring about by using the crystal. Okay. So activate the power of your crystal. You hold the purified and charged crystal in your non-dominant hand once again. Focus your intention and attention on it. And this is just one thing you can say. It's an example of what you can say. doesn't mean you have to use this. I dedicate this crystal to the highest good of all and ask that its power be activated now to work in harmony with my own will and focused attention, intention. And at this point, if you had a specific use or a specific... Um, purpose, you would add it there. So if your purpose was to increase your self-love self or self-confidence or um, increase my health and anything like, there's a whole list of things that you can ask for. Um, let's see, I might have that, yeah, right here. Those are just a few of many that you could use. Okay you would add that after your statement of intent. Um, you can you repeat this at least three times. You repeat your mantra at least three times. But I've also read that you could, some people repeat it 20 to 30 times, depending on what you feel is right, right for you. Are you saying yes. you say a sentence like the previous one and then just speak one or more of these out? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. Oh. Depending on what you're, what you want, what your intention is, what you want from the crystal. Okay. Also remember that crystals can become exhausted as they rapidly draw off their energy from the surroundings. So they do need cleansed and recharged depending on how often you use them. Um, for instance, I have a crystal grid out there if you saw on display. Uh, I'm definitely going to take that down and cleanse and recharge it after the whole entire weekend of it being the energy's been used in the environment. So, yes. Is it in the first room or in your booth? It's in the first room uh, where the kids' things are. Okay. It's against the wall in there. Thanks, guys. Did you, did you recover how you charge this, how you reflect, cleanse, and reflect? That's okay. So if, if you cleanse, and it depends on the raw, uh, the mineral that you're using, obviously, if you have a piece of pyrite, you don't want to stick that in water overnight. Okay, because Iron and water really are not a good mix. It will rust and do all kinds of weird things. I've heard that kyanite uh, doesn't take out any negativity. Would that be, could that be used if you touch that to the crystal? Yeah, it probably would. Yeah, kyanite. Kyanite. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of other uh, minerals. I would leave it uh, with it overnight. I mean, it's not going to just magically just oh, withdraw, withdraw it immediately. Um, there are lots of ways to cleanse or um, and then charging it. Um, we can put your name on a on your on the email list and I'm gonna send this PowerPoint out to everybody so you can actually read it. But there's lots of really good websites and books and information on, on all of this that I highly recommend if you're interested in it and I mean you're serious about it to invest, investigate it further. Have a paper for our email. I, I have to put a food, so yeah, here you go. Okay, so we charged it, we gave it a specific pur purpose. Now you need to take care of it when you're finished with your crystal. Um, you're going to thank it for its use, whatever you have used it for and then you need to cleanse it and then you'll store it in a cloth or a drawer or, or somewhere until you need to use it again. Um, and this is if you're just using it for a sp specific purpose. Um, if you set up a crystal grid you can leave those out indefinitely and then just keep recharging them where they are. Um, or a piece of jewelry. I mean, a lot of people you just wear your jewelry for you know a long time, and then depending on your intuition, you can uh, cleanse and recharge those every couple months or, or whatever you feel. And then that also depends on what type of crystal it is. Too. How to use your crystal? Um, people can you can wear it in jewelry. Um, it's recommended that if you're using it for a healing purpose that it's next to the skin. Uh, sometimes wire wrapped jewelry doesn't feel so good against your skin so you're not gonna wear that next to your skin. It works just as well on top of your clothing. Um, another way to use a crystal would be on your chakra uh, or you can meditate with the crystal in your hands. Um, you can actually just lay it on the part of your body and say you're having um, throat issues or something's going on. You want to have better communication skills with your throat chakra. You take an appropriate throat chakra crystal or mineral and you can put it on that area of the body um, up to 20 minutes. Don't I don't recommend going any longer than that. Thank you for coming. Um, to expand your consciousness with high vibration crystals, um, high vibration crystals are selenite, moldavite, um, Herkimer diamonds, acolyte. Um, those are very high, very high vibration crystals, and most people use those on the third eye chakra to get enlightenment or expand your consciousness. Um, those especially you don't want to hold there any longer than 15 or 20 minutes because you you <laughs> get really get loopy and then it's like it's not a, not a good thing to hold in there longer. Um, smoky quartz is a really good stone for grounding all of your energy bodies to the healing vibration and it gently dissolves negative energies and emotional blockages. Hematite is also a good one for, for that purpose. Um, another way to use crystals is to create a crystal grid. And has anybody seen the crystal grid in the other room? Okay. So that, that's an example of one. That's a larger sized one. Um, oh, there's some of the high vibrational crystals. Perkimer diamond, moldavite. Moldavite is a remnant of a meteorite that smashed into the earth and it 
create and multiply it. It's a really big thing, I guess. <laughs> Some example, crystal grids are geometric patterns of energetically aligned stones charged by intention, set in a sacred space for the purpose of manifesting a particular objective. Um, I do have crystal grid templates in my booth if anyone's interested. They're just on cardstock. You can help yourself to any of them if you're interested in actually making one. Um, I highly recommend the book um, by hibiscusmooncrystals.com is where you can find her crystal grid book. Um, it tells you everything you need to know about how to make one, uh, how to set your intention, and it walks you through every step of how to make, how to make a crystal grid. Um, it's important that you set your precise intention. Uh, in other words, what do you want to bring about? What do you want to happen with this? You need to be specific and have a specific goal in mind in order to communicate it to the source energy. Make sure your intention is clear and unmistakable. Some intentions may be health, vitality, new career, spiritual growth, mental clarity, self-love, world healing, the list goes on and on, just like before. Um, when using a crystal grid, however, make sure you're not intentionally setting out to interfere with anyone else's free will. Okay, so example, you cannot say, um, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna make a crystal grid, and I'm gonna make a love crystal grid, and I want Bill to fall in love with me. So I'm going to make this this grid. I'm going to say, Bill, I want Bill to fall in love with me. I want Bill to fall in love with me. I want Bill to fall in love. It doesn't work that way, okay? Because Bill may not want to fall in love with me. It's like he may want to ha not want to have anything to do with me. So it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, a lot of cultures think that's bad karma, and it will come back on you, and something bad will happen. So. I don't know about you, but I don't want any bad karma coming back on me. So keep that in mind. Don't use a grid for trying to manifest anything for somebody else unless they have asked you to. Okay? You can, I've seen uh, people create um, self love grid, for, in, for instance, and they'll put, they'll get a list of names of people that actually want that. And they put the, list of names underneath the center stone of the crystal grid and then they'll activate the grid. Um, you can also do that with large groups of people if you wanted to uh, manifest healing for, for instance, like a city that just got hit by a tornado or something. You could create a grid and, you know, uh, try to manifest a positive energy healing for them or for the world, you know, and that's okay. But to intentionally do it for someone else that doesn't give you permission, that's not, you can't do that. You could do it, but I don't recommend it. So try to stay away from that. So, that uh, pretty much comes to the conclusion. I just want to say, whether you're planning on wearing your crystal or as merely a decoration on your body, or you want to dive in and create an elaborate crystal grid to heal the world, if you don't remember anything from this lecture, remember one thing. Always listen to your intuition. And regardless of what you've read, heard, watched, or witnessed, what's right for someone else may not be what resonates with you. So choose your own crystals, choose your own methods, choose your own path, and always use your intuition that comes with inside of you. Okay? And I'm going to leave you with Albert Einstein. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors a servant and has forgotten the gift. I thought that was a pretty good statement. 
So use your intuition. All right. Turn that camera off. <laughs> <laughs>